As predicted, my Tales of the Jedi critique drew flack. I'd hoped for discourse in lieu of labels like wrong and sucks and implications of misogyny. But, social media. Watch that video and read its comment section for entertainment purposes. Kudos to Eskels, I hope my pronunciation is correct, for an informed take on Count Dooku. I appreciated our exchange. To the point, most criticisms were based on Dave Filoni's revisions of Star Wars canon, the officially sanctioned works that cover the galaxy's history and principles. From my perspective, tales hurt the canon. Others disagree. The topic of this video, does the canon serve a purpose? Welcome to Galactic Initiative, I'm your host Jeff. George Lucas established a canonical hierarchy with his movies at the top and everything else below. Rank was determined by the extent of Lucas's direct involvement. More Lucas meant more status. Disney has played fast and loose with the canon since purchasing Star Wars in 2012. Kathleen Kennedy doesn't know or care about it. The EU was removed from it. The Last Jedi treated it with disdain for Ryan Johnson's perverse amusement. On behalf of the fans, You tell that slimy piece of worm-ridden filth to get no such pleasure from us! The rise of Skywalker ignored it. But having a plan, you know, I have learned in some cases the hard way, um, is the most, you know, critical thing, because otherwise you don't know what you're setting up. Dave Filoni has often revised it through his projects. Rebels, Tales of the Jedi, etc. Last week, a writer for the Kenobi series complained about canonical constraints. The show's premise, its raison d'etre, broke the canon, so... Shut him up or shut him down! Does the canon serve a purpose? Yes, and more than one. The canon provides a chronology. It arranges events in order of occurrence. Very helpful. When did Sifo Diaz order the clone army? When did Yaddle die? For Dooku, which of the following happened first? His fall to the dark side or his departure from the Jedi Order? A timeline is a handy reference tool since our memories depend on a faulty camera in our minds. I borrowed that line from one of my favorite bands. It is a fact. No one can accurately recollect all the details in Star Wars without assistance. The canon determines, I'll borrow a song title from another of my favorite bands, what is and what should never be. It defines reality in the galaxy far, far away. Exceedingly useful. Can a toddler tame a tiger? Can a Jedi Master delete information from the archives with ease? Can Mace Windu overlook obvious signs of the dark side in a colleague's behavior? I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. Can a Sith Master and Apprentice sense a Jedi in their midst? Rules established early on provide coherence and convincingness to maintain a viewer's suspension of disbelief. Without them, the mind will reject what is beyond reasonable or logical, even in a fantasy world. In addition to its two reference functions, the canon plays a protective role. It guards the IP from those who would harm it, intentionally or unintentionally, with inferior and or contradictory narratives. In so doing, it sustains the franchise's value. Do you recall the series with Jedi who shot laser beams from their eyes? No, exactly. The canon discourages such ridiculousness. Do you remember lightsabers used as helicopters and flying whales with physiological hyperdrives? Yeah, the safeguard doesn't work if your executive creative director thinks he can make improvements. I'm referring to Dave Filoni, the canon man. To be clear, Dave has produced more goodness than badness for Star Wars, but, like George Lucas, like anyone, he occasionally makes mistakes. Flying whales in outer space had a precedent, the space slug in The Empire Strikes Back. So, am I saying the canon should never be altered, that the early rules and plot threads must endure throughout? Not at all. Rogue One, one of my favorite Star Wars films, altered the canon. The Mandalorian, a great series, brought changes. Bounty pucks and tracking fobs are problematic. George Lucas retroactively introduced midi chlorians with the prequels. Did he ruin the franchise? No. In my opinion, the canon should be revised and expanded over time, but only after serious consideration by a group of experts, whose dual focus is continuity and future storytelling. 
The simplest, most palatable, most reasonable modifications affect singular parts or segments of the canon, while satisfying all other established rules and chronicles. The impact of a feature film will be widespread, so these projects must, must be evaluated with the utmost care. Look no further than the sequel trilogy for what not to do lessons. Problems typically arise from unvetted individual or unilateral decisions. Two heads are better than one, goes the platitude. Is it fair to expect every canonical shift to satisfy fans? No. As I said before, mistakes will be made. The key is every group member should have bona fides, proven qualifications. So the body is a meritocracy. This is the way. Thank you for watching. Share your thoughts on the canon in the comment section. Subscribe to Galactic Initiative for all things Star Wars. Galactic Initiative is not authorized or endorsed by the Discord Limited. Any Star Wars and all related materials are registered trademarks of your Discord Limited. A subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, Walt Rights Reserve. Galactic Initiative is a registered trademark and other product and company names are trademarks of their respective holdings. Use does not imply affiliation or endorsement.